Captain Jack here. The Atari 2600 has one of the biggest homebrew communities out there, with dozens of releases every year. There's something about the simplicity. The limitations almost breed creativity. From the 4K carts that could have been released back in the day, to the gigantic cartridges that try to push the system in ways never thought possible. Today we're going to look at a few Atari homebrews released in the last year. Strike Zone Bowling easily takes the title of the best bowling game on the 2600. There's not much competition. Not only is the gameplay solid, but there's a great use of the 32k cartridge space here. Like showing you pulling up to the alleyway, or this smug employee. What does he know? Depending on how much you press left or right as you throw determines your shot angle. It's not impossible to get pretty consistent strikes here. The UI is actually pretty good for a game on this system. Not only does it show you your score, it shows you the remaining pin standing. And if you hit a pin at the right angle, you can even take out another pin with it. Playing this really makes me want to see other sports done to this level of quality on the Atari. What would baseball look like with this treatment? In a sea of Christmas games, Tober's Nightmare is one of the few Atari homebrew Halloween games. Look at that title screen. You have to throw these pumpkins to kill whatever's wandering around that night, from ghosts, witches, to zombies. After you run out of pumpkins, you'll have to find your way back up to the house so the friendly phantom guy can water the plants, making you more weapons of destruction. Each enemy has a different walking pattern, and it's their turn to inflict the damage when you're trying to get between the fence line and the house, or vice versa. There's some strategy here. You can bounce the pumpkins off the walls to get the enemies at tricky angles, or you can try to clear them in a straight line to make your journey to and fro a little bit easier. The points for each kill are even calculated based off the distance of the throw. It's an easy game to pick up. Every once in a while, an Atari homebrew game will absolutely nail character movement, and Button is in that category. It seems to be inspired by Celeste. You'll be jumping off walls and trying to press the button at the end of each level. The unique feature here is being able to take pieces of the walls out when you jump off of them, opening up new areas. The presentation is top notch, with the black and white visuals and music giving this game a bit of a personal style. It's only three levels right now as it's an early demo, but I just had to include it. It's that cool. Why don't more Atari games have movement like this? It feels great. It seems like every year there's an impossible port release for this system, and this year it's Myst. Yep, as far as I know, this is all of Myst running on the Atari 2600. There are a few frames dropped here and there because they aren't necessary, but all the interactive elements are still here. You can still set the clock, pull levers, anything you want, really. It can be kind of hard to tell what's going on, especially if you haven't played the original game before, so here are a few side-by-sides. When I first heard about this, I thought it was a joke, but you can really experience Mist this way. The best part is it fits on a 16K cartridge, not even using 32. It's a pretty impressive feat altogether. Berry Fun is a reaction game that has you trying to pick as many berries as you can without picking the unripe or rotting ones. Each round gives you less and less time to pick your berries, meaning you'll probably slip up more and more. There's no consequence to not picking the right berries, you just won't get a good high score. I didn't realize that there was a decimal in the high score at first. Dang, you only get like $3 for picking dozens of berries. You're telling me berry picking isn't a valid career choice? It comes on a slightly rarer 8K cartridge size, and something about the yellow background is mesmerizing. Here's a funny little puzzle game. Steps has you play as a squirrel trying to get to the top of a giant staircase. It's a little confusing at first what's going on here, but every step you're on has a number on it, and that's the amount of steps you can either move up or down depending on if you press left or right. So it's really about unlocking the right sequence to hit that top tile, as if you go over, you'll be kicked back to the bottom. It's colorful and has a kind of musical thing going on when you climb the stairs, which is pretty impressive considering it's on a 4K cartridge. One trick to make the puzzles easier is to count down from the top stair until you find a stair labeled the same number as its distance away from the top stair. That's the one you want to hit.
Yeah, this is a legitimate port of The Legend of Zelda. And it's more than just a simple game map. There's almost everything here. Multiple enemies, interiors, even the map in the top left side of the screen. It really goes above and beyond with a very similar overworld and dungeon locations to the original NES game. You will need a two-button controller though to access the menu to switch your items. This one is incredible. Just so many things are here. There are shops. The game even keeps track of how many bombs and arrows you have. It went way above what I was expecting. Warship definitely feels like a game that could have come out back in the day. You'll be dodging barriers as you try to diagonally swipe across the middle of the screen to intercept the warship. Or at least I assume that's the warship as there are literally two ships in this game and... Come on, I mean, it looks like war. Anyway, every time you destroy a ship, you'll rack up points, and you'll want to do this as many times as possible before the level ends. The most impressive thing here has to be the background graphics, as it looks like there's two layers to them. It's a nice graphical trick that's doing something obviously impossible on the hardware. Through the 10 levels, it can be really tempting to make risky moves trying to destroy the ship, but you don't really have that many lives, so you better be careful near the end of the game. You know, I've decided that our ship is the warship, as that ship isn't really doing anything. We're the villain here. Covey Covey is an extremely technically impressive game. It's in the same vein as Tetris and has you trying to stop the Covey virus. So I guess it's more like Dr. Mario. The only way to break down the blocks is by injecting them with the corresponding needle that matches the color of the blocks you're trying to kill and mismatching the injection creates a useless neutral block. As you place down the needle, you can actually press the button to stop it from injecting right away, setting you up for strings. There are a few different game modes here, and you can effectively make your own game mode by tweaking the settings directly. The presentation here might be the best on this list, from the great use of color to multiple music tracks to choose from. The little virus guys even glue to each other in messed up ways when they touch. Uncle Harry's Nose Hair has the best title of any Atari homebrew game, or really any homebrew game. It's the rare 2K cart that has you clipping your Uncle Harry's singular nose hair as you try to keep the hair goblin away from your priceless set of silver scissors and the coins that spawn around the screen. You can collect these coins for points, but clipping the nose hair doesn't get you any points, making it a thankless job. As far as nose hair games go, this is near the top of the list. I don't actually know what happens if the nose hair hits the bottom of the screen. I was too scared to find out. Z Keep is absolutely nuts. I had no idea Atari games could even look like this. It's basically an auto runner and you'll be hopping from one platform to the next. I couldn't begin to tell you how this game uses the blocky playfield graphics to generate a sort of pseudo 3D environment like this. It's crazy and doesn't look like it should run at all on the hardware. The ball has a buttery smooth spinning animation and although the platforms look a little bit hard to follow at first, you'll get the hang of it pretty quick. There's five levels in all and three different music tracks. Three. Having one good song is impressive, but three. Three songs. And this is all Flickerless too. Apparently Z Keep is some type of port, but ironically, there isn't much info about this game. I find all these games on AtariAge.com and I'll have the games linked in the description below. What's your favorite game we looked at? I never know how to end these more casual uh, videos, so uh, see ya.